Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at something really, really amazing and um, something really rare. So this is Kin004, this is a sample from this region right here in Africa. I think this is the Congo. Yeah, it's it's a sample from the Congo. And out of Somali, this individual is basically like a bon Bantu individual. This individual resembles Bantus and he lived actually in the 16th to 18th century common era. So it's pretty much a modern anatomical Bantu. But what's interesting about this individual is that his Y DNA is actually R1B. Uh, my trait predictor, the most precise prediction it can give is R1B. Um, the haplogroup that's defined here on the spreadsheet is that it's it's actually R1B1B2A. And his mitochondrial lineage is, it looks like, L0A1, uh, which does sound really African. It sounds like I, I've never seen um, a lineage like that being found in Europe. So this individual is... Uh, carrying a European paternal lineage, which is very interesting. And it's interesting because there is absolutely no trace of anything European in his GED match results. For example, let's see his results with Eurogenes K13. As you can see, he's not scoring anything anything European. Uh, he is scoring a little bit of West Asian, I guess, which is kind of close. He's scoring a little bit of Red Sea, which is also in that direction. But he's not really scoring any European components. Uh, very sub-Saharan African in the result. We see in the Oracle... He is closest to Bantus and Mandienka, I don't know what that is, but he's close to various Bantus. Uh, Yorubans come pretty close here as well. And if we see his results with, for example, MZLPK23B, let's click on the Oracle. It's going to be a while before the Oracle loads. This calculator's Oracle takes a longer time to load. But what's interesting, once again, is he's not scoring any European components. He's not scoring any, um, what European components are there? European farmers, he's not scoring that. And what else is there? Uh, there is also the European Hunter Gatherers. He's not scoring any of that. The the closest thing to European that he scores is South and Central Asian, and and Near East. That's pretty much it. That's the closest thing to European that this individual scores. And but somehow he has haplogroup R1B, which is really crazy. Uh, so this really goes to show you that you can have a haplogroup that is really different from the rest of your autosomal DNA because it's just such a, uh, the uh, the lineage that gave you this, um, the portion of your ancestry that gave you this lineage is actually such a tiny portion of your overall ancestry that it might not even show up on an autosomal test. But it is still there. So this individual still has European ancestry for sure because his Y DNA is R1B. He definitely has European ancestry, but it's just you can't really see it on an, uh, on an autosomal test because it's just such a small, it was probably one ancestor, um, maybe a millennia ago, and that doesn't show up on the test because it's a very small part of what made him him. He might have even lost those autosomal markers that um, that he got from this individual, from, from this ancestor, but he still has the haplogroup. The haplogroup is still 100% identical to that European who was his great, 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 whatever, however many generations ago, grandfather. All right, so the oracle loaded here, and here he's closest to Fang and Bantu, once again closest to various sub-Saharan Africans, very interesting. So um, what about this haplogroup, haplogroup R1B? There's a couple of, there's like 50 different genes that are located on the, y, on the Y chromosome. So if you take into account these 50 genes, he would probably be similar to Europeans in terms of all of them, to Western Europeans in particular. Uh, what are the, I, I, what are these genes really implicated in. I was thinking that haplogroup um, genes on the Y chromosome probably would be implicated in things that have to do with your penis, uh, like how large it is or how it's shaped. I don't know because I mean, it's such a gender specific, it's such a, it's such a gender specific trait that it would probably be defined by something on the Y um, chromosome. I think I'm not sure. I haven't really done much research into that. Just, that's just a guess. So this individual actually probably does have some European traits as well, but those are not traits. Those are not traits like coloring or appearance. Those are probably something more uh, that has to do with gender and uh, male-specific traits. So let's go ahead and check his ethnic calculator results with my trait predictor. And here he is closest to uh, African American and Shamlaka and Mota Ethiopian hunter gatherer. Followed by that is Tafarout. From Northern Africa, followed by that is Hoi San Hunter Gatherer from Southern Africa, followed by that is the second African American, this Tafarout individual, Kenya Pastorialis Neolithic, which is really not really sub Saharan African at all. Uh, Pastorius Neolithic from Kenya is more of, um, I guess it's more of an East African than sub Saharan African. 
then clint chimpanzee i don't i don't mean to be racist i don't mean to be you know offensive to anybody um but i realize that when you include uh clint chimpanzee and the gorilla with my with my ethnicity calculator they score really similar stuff to um sub-saharan africans it wasn't intentional it really wasn't inten intentional and i if you if you are a sub-saharan african and you scored closest to them i do apologize um but they they score really similar to sub-saharan african so that's why they show up here uh with the oracle neanderthals and denisovans show up really close to sub-saharan africans as well and it's not just my calculator it's also gd match and pretty much any other calculator you use all right, now let's go ahead and check Nashakwat, what this individual looks like. So this is kind of the predicted phenotype for him. Um, if in case you can't tell what the difference between the top and the and the second picture is, look at the nose shape. I did actually add a nose shape predictor with my uh, Nashakwat. So this Nashakwat actually combines all of the previous tools that I've made before that determine eye shape, nose shape, uh, hair shape. Everything is combined here into this application. So uh, this phenotype right here, he's he's closer to the phenotype with a wider nose. That's because he's probably scoring a wider, more uh, sub-Saharan African, less Eurasian-like nose shape. And third place comes this phenotype. The, uh, this phenotype is pretty different from what you would expect somebody from this region to look like. Uh, the reason it is coming at third is because there isn't enough um, phenotypes for sub-Saharan Africans in um, you know, in, in the reference sheet, and I will add more, so it will be a lot better, because currently there is only 43 phenotypes in the reference sheet, and like like 15 or 18 of them are Europeans. So uh, it's all the other ethnicities of the world are a little bit underrepresented. That's why you can see uh, results that, for example, the first phenotype might make sense, but the second and third might be a little bit um, bizarre. And as I add more, as I add more, it will be a lot better. All right, for for eye color likelihood distribution, it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes. Definitely got very dark eye color. Uh, there is pretty much no likelihood of any eye color lighter than brown. So it's either brown or darkest brown, but most likely darkest brown. For hair color, it looks like he's got black hair. Definitely no um, odds for any hair colors besides black. For skin color, it looks like definitely very dark brown skin. And there is no odds for any skin color besides dark brown. For hair texture, he most likely has kinky hair, but there's also a pretty significant likelihood of curly hair and wavy hair, and there's even a 4% likelihood of straight hair. But really, it is, it's not a very high quality file, and that's probably the reason. If this file was larger in size, and it's only 14 megabytes large, if it was larger in size, the kinky hair would probably be close to 100. That's what I'm saying. Uh, when it comes to blue eye haplotypes, it looks like he does not have any of the blue eye haplotypes. No BH3, no BH2, no BH1, no BH4. Um, he does not have any light color variance in a seep, so definitely very dark color of uh, skin. And it also influences eyes and hair, but it's mostly about skin. No light color variance in SLC4582. Once again, mostly, um, most, li most likely darker color of hair, eyes, and skin. Um, okay, what else is here? And there, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. That's uh, all I can talk about here. Unfortunately, a lot of the relevant SNPs are not found in the file. So that makes the classification a little bit more difficult. And for MC1R, it looks like this individual does not have any derived variants in MC1R and definitely doesn't have any predisposition to being ginger. All right, now let's check his polygenic risk scores and monogenic stuff, um, monogenic traits. We're going to see uh, what kind of traits he has. So we're going to check polygenic risk scores. It looks like he's got a... Pretty much average score for schizophrenia. Uh, relative to Europeans, it's slightly above average. Relative to Sub-Saharan Africans, it's slightly below average. For type 2 diabetes, it looks like he's got a slightly below average score for type 2 diabetes, a slightly below average score for Alzheimer's, and a below average score for MS. So it's pretty healthy. It looks pretty healthy. For cancer section, 0 for breast cancer out of 4, which is pretty good. 3 for testicular cancer out of 12, which is pretty good once again. Really good score. Um, 0 for celiac disease out of 6, which is... Unfortunately, not a lot of relevant stuff was found in this file. Once again, it's not the highest quality file I've seen. But 0 out of 6 for celiac disease is good. Uh, GSS, nothing was found. All right. For Crohn's disease, 2 out of 16 for Crohn's. Really good to see. For Reifenstein's, nothing was found once again. And for Parkinson's, 1 out of 10 for Parkinson's, which is kind of okay. 
not that bad. Uh, let's check the monogenic stuff. So it looks like he's got GG in Combs Val Met variation, so he's a warrior. Very typical stuff for Sub-Saharan Africans. Most of them are warriors. Uh, what this implies is that this individual probably has higher activity of the Combs enzyme that breaks down dopamine and therefore quicker breakdown of, do of dopamine, less dopamine in the system. Uh, this genotype confers some advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in memory and attention tasks, hence why it's called the warrior. Uh, warrior, excuse me. It's the strategy that uh, that the person is better at resilience to stress and stressful situations kind of fuel the dopamine. They, um, they contribute to a higher dopamine output and, and that helps the individual perform at optimal, optimal level in a stressful environment. But unfortunately, there's not enough dopamine in the system when the environment isn't stimulating enough. And because of that, these people don't have um, the, the best attention and motivation. Whereas when the warrior genotype, which is most, most typical for Europeans, it's the, it's the reverse of that. It's the opposite. Where when you have enough uh, dopamine to stimulate you when the environment around you is not that stimulating. So, for example, in school, you can, you can stimulate yourself and you can motivate yourself and you can pay attention. However, when the environment is stimulating uh, to, a, to a greater extent, you have too much dopamine and that causes some problems. So you can't really tolerate stress all that well. So that's the difference between warrior versus warrior in, sh in pretty much short term. Sort of explained it to you. Uh, next, this individual does not have any no-go learning variants due to prophylactic pro variation. So he has higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, okay, very typical for his ethnicity. And no A1 allele and TAC1, which is really good once again. So he does not have a decrease in the number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. And he pretty much has normal or slightly higher number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain and therefore a slightly lower risk of ADHD on alcoholism. This does sort of increase the likelihood of stuff like schizophrenia, but schizophrenia is just such a rare condition that this increased likelihood doesn't mean much when you compare it to the likelihood of ADHD and alcoholism, which is actually a lot more common. So it's a, it's a good genotype, I think. It's really good. Um, all right, we're going to skip autism. We're going to skip DDC. Besides, nothing was found here. For lactose persistence, this individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation for the empathy gene. Actually, that's kind of crazy. For the empathy gene, it's uh, really atypical genotype. He seems to have sociopathic genotypes in OXTR, which is not typical for sub-Saharan Africans at all. Uh, that surprised me a little bit. So he does not have the empathy alleles in OXTR. Very interesting. All right. Okay. Surprising. A little bit of a sociopath. All right, for diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. Hemochromatosis, nothing was found rel relevant to that. For Alzheimer's, it looks like he um, does not have any alleles for risk of Alzheimer's. Good to see. For MS, it looks like he does not have risk variance in HLA, which is, uh, if, you don't, if you know one genotype in HLA, you pretty much know all the rest because they're linked to each other and they're located right, right next to each other. So him not having DRB1, 15, or 1 allele, the risk variant there means he probably doesn't have any risk variance in any of the other HLA alleles. So that's good to see. Okay. We're going to skip cardiovascular disease. Uh, for myopia, it looks like he's got high rods of myopia. All right. For miscellaneous section, micropenus is unfortunately not here, but he's got higher IQ, better performing muscles like a splinter than endurance athlete, no fat gene variance in FTOs, RS-1939-609, so he's not predisposed to obesity. He likely has 40 sneeze reflex, and he does not have any variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Okay, uh, that, that's a very South Asian thing. Uh, this the, the derived allele here picks in South Asians, so he's not a South Asian at all. So nothing is surprising here, and he's got a age new type in this variation of EZAR, which means likely no shallow shaped ancestors and not East Asian in ancestry. So it looks like he's got a genotype in EDAR that is typical for everybody who's not East Asian. Really good to see. Drug response, we're going to skip that. Uh, albinism, a typical trace, nothing relevant was found. Familiar Mediterranean fever, nothing relevant. Well, there is no risk variance here, so okay. For MCHFR panel, it looks like he's got this genotype which leads to lower odds of various health issues. And this genotype which leads to average or slightly higher than average blood pressure. For cancer panel, he's got this genotype, which leads to six times reduced risk of testicular cancer, which is really good to see. So definitely doesn't have testicular cancer. Testicular cancer is a very European thing as well. Uh, most Europeans don't, don't really have an increased risk of that. 
For leukemia, he's got this gene type which leads to lower risk of leukemia, rare diseases and traits we're going to skip. Celiac disease, it looks like he does not have risk variance for that. We're going to skip allergies. Allergen receptor gene, he's got typical or higher odds of boldness, which is kind of interesting. Because if you look at the spread of distrib uh, the distribution spread in, of the alleles in this variation, you will see that uh, the higher or typical odds of boldness, typ typically this G allele is most common in Europeans and Sub-Saharan Africans and East Asians tend to have the other allele, which I think is the A allele, which sort of protects from boldness. So in, in his case, he is unlike, unlucky enough to have the European allele in fact, be homo homozygous for the European allele, which increases the odds of boldness. Even though most people from his ethnicity tend to have the alternative allele, which I think is I think is A. I'm pretty sure it's A. Let's uh, let's do some researching. Hold on. Um, let's open an SNPDA. Yeah, it's A. A is the alternative allele. So um, most of the Sub-Saharan Africans have A allele, and he's got GG. Yeah, so you see like Yoruba here, 60.3% uh, of Yorubans have AA, 19% have AG, and 20.6%. I don't really trust this data. It does not, because look at the spread. Uh, the spread, the way they organize the spread, is it's not following the Hardy-Weinberg uh, equation. Uh, it's, it's not really aligned the way it should be. So I don't really trust the spread, but you see the pattern is that in sub among Sub-Saharan Africans, the predominant allele is A which is actually good, which protects from boldness. In his case, he's got two G alleles, which increased the odds of boldness. So I guess, um, you know, he's got uncommon genotype here. Crohn's syndrome, nothing was found. Nothing relevant was found, which is pretty good to see. Canavan syndrome, looks like no risk variance here. All right. For HIV and AIDS panel, no risk variance in this variation, which means he does not have an increased risk of HIV. Good to see. And for muscular dystrophy panels, zero risk variance here and zero risk variance for ADL out of six total. Unfortunately, not a lot of, of data was found for ADL, so we can't really judge that, but looks good. And for color blindness panel, it looks like he's got one risk variance and OPN one SW out of two. All right, so maybe a little bit of predisposition to being colorblind, but nothing. W but this is not the most important gene for color colorblindness. These two are. Um, more they pl they have a much larger contribution and nothing relevant for that was found here for fto on the fat gene panel it looks like no fat gene variants in fto and lower bmi and he's got this genotype which leads to lower risk of male pattern boldness most common for sub-saharan africans pretty cool uh this genotype which leads to lower predisposition to anger and this genotype which leads to longer telomere length and longer lifespan so telomere length you know at the end of your chromosomes there are these little uh there's these regions that don't really play, play a functional role in your DNA and don't really play a functional role in the way you work, but they are still there. And the reason they are still there is because every time your uh, cells reproduce, a small portion of your chromosomes at the very end is lost, right? A small portion of this data is lost. And you need to have this buffer there, which sort of protects your actual working, uh, your working data that you need to, to live. And this, this buffer is the telomeres. So having longer telomere length means you have more of a buffer and your biological age might, might be a little bit higher. You might be able to live, uh, provided you don't like do drugs and um, get diabetes and like uh, mess up your cholesterol, provided you don't die from some kind of bullshit reason like that. If you have longer telomeres, you might be able to survive longer and age at a, at a longer age, uh, at a higher age, because your, um, your DNA is going to be your... Um, chromosomes are going to be protected by these telomeres at the end, which are going to be longer. So in his case, it looks like he's got a longer lifespan. That's really good to see. I don't know if I explain it that well. I don't have a script or anything. I'm just kind of like talking about it as I go through the video. Well, thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link, from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.